on the mic. There's the mic. We're lit up like a like a, like a Christmas tree. Anyway, uh, welcome, welcome, Aaron. Can you please tell me, are we live yet? Can we? Are we on air? Twenty four seconds. Online. I'm refreshing the Facebook one more time. Okay. Uh, so my video. I will click to see if I can hear you. Hey, if, if you are happy, happening to stop by this live stream today, would you please comment below saying that you can hear and see me live right now uh, at 12.03 p.m. on this segment of Ask Teresa, which is segment six. This is episode six. Check and see. Let me know if you can or cannot hear me. Aaron, if we don't have anybody watching right now, they'll be watching the replay, but you can hear me. Okay, wonderful. Hey, so today, welcome. Today is the 25th day of July, 2018. Just in case you're watching the replay, it'll put things in perspective. It'll let you know, you know, what day and what time we are operating in. Uh, most of the information will remain true because it has for the last uh, millennial. Uh, this information has remained true and we try to bring to you every single week uh, around the same time, usually on Wednesdays uh, around noon. We're, we're bringing to you live information that will impact, hopefully in a positive way, how your life goes and particularly with as it relates to real estate and uh, finances and things like we do more than just real estate. It's more than just a real estate deal. It is really connecting with people, empowering people. Um, we help the agent community. We want to uplift and we want to we want to just be um, an integral source resource for the community. So today uh, we are going to get right into it and talk about the baby boomers because it is a segment of our population, which is uh, the largest segment. These are people born between 1946 and 1964 uh, during that period of time. There were 80 million baby boomers born, and those folks started turning 60 in 2006. So, uh, and they've been turning 60 in 2000 and since 2006 at a rate of 10,880 people a day. That's a whole, whole lot of people. And to give you an idea of uh, what that's going to look like for the next 10 years, um, excuse us, we're cleaning floors today, but at for the next 10 years, these these this group of people this these baby boomers will continue to turn 60 at a rate of 10,880 people per day so that's a lot of people now listen let me give you an idea of how that impacts you know how they what kind of economic force they are because in real estate it's it it, it, it has a significant impact on real estate and so if you're an agent out there and you're not paying attention to those folks who are now uh, positioned to downsize. These are very stable. It's a very stable group of folks. As a matter of fact, just so you know, they carry two thirds of the wealth that and of all wealth. They handle two thirds of all wealth. They are carrying 66% of every dollar that is uh, that is being utilized, that is available for use. The baby boomers got it. So we wanna pay attention to them. Why? Because when the baby boomers started turning 16, the Ford Mustang became the biggest selling car ever. Why? Because when the baby boomers started having children, the minivan became the number one selling car almost overnight. Why do we want to pay attention to the baby boomers? And why am I focused so uh, so keenly on this group in this segment? Because when uh, when 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 Pampers came out, when the baby boomers started having babies, Pampers became a household name because of this segment of the population. So those, this segment is very, very important, not to mention some of the things that I just uh, went over with relating, relating to their, um, how much money that they are holding. Now, what I want, to, want you to know is that right now, if you were thinking about, if you wanted to kind of get an idea of what the baby boomer, what the force is, think about shoving a basketball through a water hose. If you can get that imagery, that's the kind of force that the baby boomers have. That's how big the group is. It's an amazingly large group. So uh, if you're just joining us, I, I'm just gonna welcome you again. Today, we're talking about downsizing. We're talking about the baby boomers. We're talking about those folks born between 1946 and 1964. Now, the baby boomers are one of the largest groups out there. And guess what they're doing these days? They're not building 
the suburbs like they were 30 or 40 years ago. Now, the baby boomers who had those four bedroom, two and a half bath houses are making the decision to downsize. What they want is they want less size. They want uh, more convenience. They don't want to have to do so much yard work. So they're moving into condominiums. They're moving into closer to the city, into neighborhoods that are more controlled. They're moving into some senior housing. And some of them, if they stay in their homes too long, you know, or when to the point to where they, they just really don't want to deal with ownership, some of those folks are actually moving into senior option housing, which um, we want to talk about today because it's it's important. A lot of that is is predicated by Medicare and or Medicaid. So it's very, very important to have a plan in place so that they're not giving away all of their assets to the government. And we just want to make people aware that it is it's significant. It's something that we need to focus on. Now, let's talk about some smart moves and uh, or let me back up for a minute and talk about some of the concerns of the baby boomers. What I'm finding out is those people who have been in their homes for 20, 30, 40 years, what they do is they accumulate a lot of stuff. And a lot of times they just don't know what to do with the stuff. It's important to, to recognize that in these communities, it's if you get the right group of people assisting you, we've got all sorts of support out there so that you're not having to worry about all of the things that you've accumulated. My recommendation always is to tell folks you might want to take the things that you're going to give to your children and not wait until we deal with estates and perhaps give them to them while you're still around. Hand over some of these things. Let's kind of lighten the load a little bit because typically when we move, we're not moving into the same size. We're not moving into the four bedroom, two and a half bath with the basement and the two car garage that might be filled up with stuff. We're now moving into, you know, 13, 1400 square feet new condos and a lot of times they just don't have basements so we want to we want to give away and lighten up the load oftentimes we need some assistance with that and there are groups out there that do a really really good job we've got a whole set of resources that can help you to get your home ready and just kind of downsize on the items forgive me there's a Lowe's truck driving by anyway um so we want to we want to get rid of the accumulation of things uh, and and just kind of uh, pare down so that in our new space, uh, we're not having to carry or buy storage. And there, are, like I said, there are a lot of resources out there. Sometimes we're doing tag sales. Sometimes uh, we come together with a community yard sale, which is a little bit different. There are uh, systems like Offer Up where we can sell it right online and people just come pick it up from you and drop off a little bit of money in order to get your things. What, your, what you consider not necessarily valuable, might be very, very valuable for somebody in the community that might actually need it. And so um, we encourage you to, um, to, to take advantage of all these resources that are now online. And if you need assistance, we will be here to help every step of the way. Uh, the other thing is, which I just mentioned briefly, is, is that if you are not purchasing and you're actually going into um, housing where you're getting assistance and you're going to need, you know, the, this um, assisted living situation can be very, very expensive. Oftentimes it is subsidized through um, so through not just your Social Security or your pension, but subsidized through Medicaid or Medicare. If that is the case, we want to make sure that our assets are situated before we go into those circumstances. So that may require a little bit of a little bit of planning. Got my phone ringing, excuse it. Uh, and, and it could save you thousands and thousands of dollars. We don't think that you necessarily, if you plan appropriately, you don't necessarily have to give it all the way to the government. But if you don't plan appropriately, believe you me, they will have some attachments, some liens and some encumbrances on your assets. So it's very important to plan. You may not wanna necessarily hold on to the, those assets the same way you did prior to. You, I can recommend some things that you might want to take a look at. For instance, I can refer you to some of the attorneys that I know that would be happy to help you get things in a trust and get things situated so that it is not necessarily attached to you at this point. There are a variety of ways to handle this. Um, updated homes, that's another issue. 
if you've ever been in uh, neighborhoods where people have lived for 30, 40, 50 years, and um, you've seen the pink tubs and the green toilets, and I've even seen some purple countertops. Uh, these are the colors of the 70s, 60s and 70s. It was a psychedelic era, and we were just doing any colors, anything we felt. And a lot of these things, a lot of these homes remain in perfect condition, but for 1965. So what we've got to do is uh, we have to accommodate or decide whether or not we're going to update this property and whether or not there is a, there's a cost benefit to it. You know, by putting the money in, what I mean is, are we going to get that money back out? There's a way to determine that. If we're talking about kitchens and we're talking about baths, usually you're going to get your money back out. Otherwise, if, if we're just talking about general aesthetics, like paint, or uh, we're talking about removing carpet from some hardwood floors, then probably not so much. We probably don't have to do too much. So I would love to talk to you about it. If you have something out there, if you have a home that you're thinking about selling and you need my help, just give me a call so that I can help you to figure that out and send in some resources to help you figure out which way to go, which way is going to be best. So let's talk about next, next category, smart money moves. Listen, I, when, when we're talking about smart money moves, um, these are some things to consider if you are a downsizer. Now I've got my little cheat sheet here so that I stay on track. So if there are questions out there, and I'm moving too fast. What I want you to do is just chime in and ask those questions. Erin is standing by so she can stop me at any point in time and I can get your questions answered. But um, if you are doing, if you are uh, deciding that you are going to probably go into some assisted housing uh, or assisted living situations, might be to your advantage to consider a smart money move which is to go ahead and sell what it is you have right now, take that cash and maybe get into an annuity situation. If you are thinking about going into uh, uh, even a condominium, condominium after getting out of your primary residence, perhaps you want to take the cash, put it into uh, what we call a HECM loan. And the HECM loan uh, allows you to do things. It is a, a product of the reverse mortgage family, but unlike a standard reverse mortgage, it is not a situation where they're paying you. It's a situation where you can purchase a house, put 40% down, and then you have essentially a life estate. You have zero payments for the entire life estate so long as you remain in that premises. That's something that could definitely help if you are on a, in a, on a tighter budget as you've retired. You can consider putting 40% down because usually if we are owning property for 30 or 40 years, we usually will have significant equity in our property. And what that allows for is for you to live without having a house payment and only having taxes and insurance. There are some qualifications and some things you need to be aware of if you decide you're interested in that. And I'm going to give you just a couple. Number one, you have to be 62 and a half in order to uh, apply for that. It is a FHA product and it is available to anybody who's 62 and a half. They are not, this is not based on credit. It is based on cash. So if you're purchasing a house for 150,000, you're going to need 60,000 down. You come up with the 60,000, you will have no payments for the entire, your entire life until you pass away. So the um, question might beg, what happens after we pass away? What happens? Well, guess what? Um, there is no liability for your estate. If your value of your home has exceeds the balance on the mortgage, because there is a mortgage attached, then the money will go to the estate. It will be sold and the money will go to your estate. If the balance on the mortgage is not in excess, like you're in a negative, a deficit situation because you live too long, then guess what? There is no liability for your estate. But if you have a life insurance policy in place 
and you want to transfer that asset to your family, you can do so by paying off the house with the life insurance policy or skip the house and just give the policy to the kids. There's, you know, it creates an estate immediate. So those are some of the things that um, could really benefit you and just help you to understand, you know, the overall benefits of when you downsize the things you need to know. Um, process and preparing for selling. Well, I, you know, again, we talked about distributing items that you'll no longer want to keep things that have been in your garage, but still have some sentimental value, maybe getting those things to the children, to the cousins, to the nieces, whoever you decide you want to give it to. Uh, we talked about annuitizing and maybe taking some of that cash and installing it into a policy, which is a product of life insurance It's called an annuity so that you can have an income for life and perhaps pass some things down to your, to your kids in the future. Um, and then with that, I think I've pretty much covered everything. Erin, was there anything I didn't cover on this? No, I think that you really have. <laughs> that was quick. It was quick. It was quick. Um, we'll talk a call to talk about how you can get the baby boards and talk a little bit more about those programs. Okay. So, guys, listen, uh, I, I love having Erin here because she just keeps me on track. You know, when you're looking at a screen and you're looking into nowhere and you're talking, a lot of times you need that. So, Yay, Erin! <laughs> I'm glad you're here. <laughs> Keep me straight. But anyway, y'all, so again, um, how I can help is, is that, you know, some time ago, I actually got licensed in, uh, many moons ago. They're almost 25, 25 years ago, 1994. And, you know, how I can help is, uh, is really just to act as a guide. That is when you're ready. That is if you need me. Uh, not everybody's ready to sell their house, even if they're downsizing. That's the bottom line. Everybody's not ready. But when you're ready um, or if you just want to stay in the loop and stay in the know, this information is free. I give it away freely. I speak to people and give them their information, give them whatever information they need to have so that they can make intelligent decisions. Um, if you're an agent and you want to learn more about how this segment of the population uh, needs to receive information, Definitely, you can give me a call. Uh, we have one generation right now, the baby boomers properties, I will just say this much about the marketplace, are on fire. It doesn't really matter if they've got the pink toilet or if they have the uh, uh, green tub or if they have the purple sink. It doesn't really matter because we've got two other generations right now that are pushing this marketplace. In other words, the X generation we're now becoming grandparents, kind of young, kind of young grandparents, but we are becoming grandparents. And as we become grandparents, this other generation, the millennials, the millennials are actually, and didn't you mention the Y? I don't know who the Y is, but we got some millennials. Okay, so we've got X, which are 45 million people. We've got Y, which I don't have the numbers on Y. But I do have the numbers on the millennials and the millennials are bigger than the, uh, the previous generation of baby boomers. There are 90 million millennials. And with that and in, in those forces, it is there is some pressure to sell property or to buy property because of the demand and pricing goes up when demand goes up. So those are two things that run congruent. What we want to do is we want to be able to transfer these properties without losing our equity to things like taxation, things like uh, not being prepared the proper estate, uh, things like we don't want to lose our equity to Medicaid or Medicare. So we want to definitely plan for that. I've got some resources. I am always open to sharing that information. Um, hopefully this was quick and dirty and gave you all the information you needed to know for today. Uh, if you want to discuss it further, you know how to reach me. My phone number is 614-778-8503. I'm here every week. You can, you can find this here every week. Uh, if you have a subject or a topic that you'd like to discuss and it has anything to do with real estate or life insurance, because I'm licensed in both, or taxation, because I'm licensed in that, we can, we can have a nice discussion. Uh, about that. And if you're an agent and you're interested in learning how to serve our community 
at the highest level. I definitely want you to get in contact with me and let's just talk. Let's just have a conversation to see if this is something, if there's something that I can do to help you move in the direction you're trying to move in as well. So, uh, Aaron, what else we got, girl? What else we got? That's it. Just as long as they know that they can come to you about, you know, information about the uh, the reverse mortgages and that sort of thing. Right. So if that's the thing. I think the big bombshell. I think the big bombshell here is that they can. Uh, hang on. I'm gonna ask one question because you know I have Dar here. I want to know if she knew about that. Did you know about that? No. She didn't know about that. Okay. Do you have some aunties, some cousins, and some friends that are older that might be able to use that? that program where they put 40% down, they've been working their whole lives, and now they can put this 40% down, have no payment? Uh, yeah, they Wouldn't they be that excited that about that? Would. Are y'all excited about that? I mean, I'm excited, I'm 52. That means in 10 years, I can throw 40% down, no payment, no payment, zero. Life is safe. You know, sometimes, Aaron, one of the things I wanna mention, sometimes we're not leaving a bunch of stuff to our kids. Sometimes we're going to leave our stuff to the Columbus Zoo <laughs> just because, you know what I'm saying? So I'm not necessarily so worried about whether my kids are going to inherit my house. Really, what I want after working 40 years is a quality of life. Isn't that right? Isn't that what we want? We want. I'm about to turn the camera on Dar here. See, can y'all see her? See her over here? She popped in. We actually have some work to do. Aaron, do you see her? I'm trying to get back to the Okay, you, you're not even on screen. I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't have it on play because I'll get feedback. Okay, but, okay, well, thank you for telling me that. But anyway, the bottom line is, is that as we get into our 60s and 70s and 80s, we've worked 30, 40 years, there's, we want a quality of life. And usually what happens is when you retire, your income goes down, not up. It goes down. You're not getting 100% of your dollar. Meanwhile, there are certain things that have gone up. What goes up? Electric bills, utilities, cost of health care. All of these things are going up. So how we plan is important. It's very important to understand that you want to have all your options. You want to have you want to know exactly what you can do. And a lot of people end up losing stuff just for lack of knowledge. People perish for the lack of knowledge. So anyway, y'all, uh, okay, I think I'm, a, I'm I think I made the point. I think I made the point. And uh, if again, if you want to have a conversation, if you have aging parents, if we need to, you know, put some support behind you, that's what we're here for. We're really here to develop the relationships with the community, the stakeholders in the community and try to add value, significant value. We love our community. And it's a win-win if we support you, guaranteed if we give you all the things that you need. What happens is we're, we are extraordinarily blessed because we have an opportunity to serve you. So um, it's Teresa Barron. I'm with Take a Look Real Estate Brokers. And for today, I'm going to say peace and blessings. And I want you to pop in and let me know if there's anything I can do for you. You can find us on Facebook. You can click on the link. Please share this information. And again, make it a wonderful day. 614-778-8503 is my call number. You can call me or you can text me and have, like I said, a wonderful, wonderful day. See ya. Bye.